Hey guys, I thought I'd do a quick look at my 2017 Honda CRV. So, um, redone for 2017. I think the body looks pretty good. Definitely improved over the previous generations. I always thought the CRVs look kind of tall and narrow, and they've just altered it just enough to kind of break up that profile. A lot of it has to do with the taillights. They're more, they have that horizontal bar now and um, and then on the sides they go forward quite a fair amount and they still have the up and down part, the vertical part and that's your turn signals and stuff but it just really helps to uh, to make it a little lower a little chunkier looking which I think is what it what it needed and this one has 18 inch wheels too which I think helped to make it look better this is the touring edition the top one so it has a lot of chrome which we can take or leave but um, maybe it helps break up the black a little bit on the lower parts there the main reason I went with the touring was for the They're, they're um, really good, they're really bright in the low beams, and these do have uh, automatic high beams, which I haven't used a whole lot because I'm usually just driving in the city, but um, the low beams have that real nice white light compared to the more yellow halogens that um, the halogen lamp put out. Unfortunately, the Honda makes you go all the way up to the Touring. The top of the line one is the only one that has the LED headlights, so hopefully they trickle down through time. It does have uh, light bars that for daytime running lights in there too, below the LEDs. And then there's the front. Um, never a big fan of the front grille on the CRVs. I always felt like they were trying to do two different grills, like one design on the top half and then the mesh on the bottom half there. I like the one from a few years ago where it's just three silver bars. I thought that looked pretty clean, but this isn't too bad. Comes with halogen fog lights. And then these are the 18 inch wheels. Uh, two tone there. Um, yeah, they look pretty good. I can take or leave two tone wheels, but it is a good looking wheel, I think. And there's the chrome on the sides. So it does have touch on the back of the handle to unlock it. So you just put your hand back there. I will say it's a lot less sensitive than the the Fords that I've had with the that type of setup. Um, a lot of times I do end up get, pull, putting my hand there, yanking it, and the door is still locked. So you almost have to hold it there for a second, and then it'll unlock. And then to lock it again, you just push this where the three bars are there. This is the, the uh, tan color. I forget what it's called exactly, but like a desert tan or something. In the super bright light, it does have a, me a metallic look to it, but um, that's pretty unusual. Usually it does look like a pretty flat color, um, but it's kind of an interesting color. I've never had a tan car like that before. The nice thing too on the um, the CRVs is is you can have a you can turn it on or off, but if you get more than eight feet away from the car, it'll automatically lock. So here I'll unlock it. So the doors are unlocked. And now as I back away, so one beep to let you know the door's closed or whatever, your trunk's closed. And there, that second beep means the doors are locked now because the key fob is away from the door. So this is the key fob. And uh, they all come, I think they all come with remote start this year. And there's your trunk popper button. Um, it's a nice, nice weight to the key fob. So I, I like that quite a bit. It feels substantial. So the interior, um, definitely very nice. Um, 
again, I wasn't necessarily looking to get the top of the line one, but I really wanted the LED headlights, and so it does come with the leather seats. They are, um, I want to say they're 12-way power. They have four, the lumbar goes up and down and in and out, and then all your power seats. Um, got the WeatherTech floor mats. I always like those. Um, so let's hop in here. So the door um, is uh, soft touch on the top, kind of a knurled leather there. And then you have this wood, fake wood grain. Um, it, I mean, I've definitely seen worse. So they, they've definitely made it like a matte finish, so that helps, but you're never going to mistake it for real wood. <laughs> but it looks okay. And um, then you have this soft touch leather here. Um, you have the padded door armrest there, the chrome door handle. You have two uh, memory seats there you can set to go with the key fobs if you would like. Um, the power windows are automatic up and down for the front two. Power mirrors there, they are heated mirrors with the heated seats. And so yeah, we'll start it up. There's a push button start here, so you just put your foot on the brake. Uh, it's kind of silly, but I like that it's red because I was shopping when I was checking out Mustangs. The normal Mustang is white, and you had to go up to the uh, GT3 for the red. So <laughs> now I have a red push button right on the CRV here. So this is the um, the uh, I'm just gonna roll down the windows here. So nice LED, big LED. Um, gauge cluster in the front it's a, I think it's a seven inch screen and um, and then you have your analog temperature gauge and fuel gauge on the left and right there and you actually do still have a, a stock here to cycle through the um, odometers there so I have about a thousand miles on here gives you your temperature your time and then um, it has a digital tack tachometer at the top there you can t you can actually remove that I believe and then a um, digital speedometer so I'm a big fan of the gauge cluster I, I like the the um, I like it being digital like that um, and it well the colors are pretty simple it actually does full colors pretty nicely because if you have it on Pandora radio it'll show a little uh, icon album art in the screen and it's it renders it pretty well so they could go a lot more complex with the colors if they wanted to um, you know the ultimate would be like the Audis where they put the Google Maps up up there so hopefully someday um, so the steering wheel here nice steering wheel it's a, the really nice nine and three grips I like that a lot little 10 and 2 notches there leather wrapped so it feels really nice in your hand um, I had a Fiesta ST for a while and that 9 and 3 grip was very it's almost like a angle heart right angle there and so this is really comfortable so I like holding it there um, and then over here you have your volume you can click it up and down or you can slide your finger up and down it which um, you know works okay um, and then this button will cycle you through your different screens. So it's a little clunky because you you go to you pick what screen you want, and then if you just leave it on there, it'll take a good 10 seconds to to show that screen. So otherwise, what you do is when you get to the one you want, uh, then you go over to this enter and you click enter, and then it'll bring up the screen. So. Um, but you have your mileage stuff, your gas mileage. This is a compass. Um, and uh, this is a awake driver attention level, so it's supposed to alert you if it senses you're falling asleep. So that's kind of nifty. I haven't really tried that out 
right now. Um, this shows the um, where the torque's going on the wheels. And so this is all-wheel drive one. And um, yeah, whenever I have it up, it's actually really surprising because it CRVs did have a pretty weak um, all-wheel drive system before. I think only 25% of the torque could go to the to the uh, rear wheels. Um, and now it's up to, I want to say 40% can go back there. And honestly, through this winter, the four-wheel drive, almost all the time, the four, all four wheels are getting uh, power. So that's been pretty cool. I hope it does turn off a little more <laughs> in the warm weather because I feel like I'm losing a little gas mileage there. But um, the all-wheel drive is way better uh, in this new generation CRV. So that's cool. This is uh, shows you your oil life. Uh, and then this will show you your music up in the screen here, which I'll turn it on just so you can see. So that's kind of what that looks like. And then... Okay, that's uh, supposed to be able to show your messages. I haven't quite figured that out. Maybe it's just when it's Apple CarPlay is turned on. Uh, you can switch from uh, miles to kilometers there and then back to the gas so yeah, you can see not the greatest gas mileage 21.2 miles per gallon but um, you know there's a few factors I mostly only take city trips a lot of short trips stop and start um, winter gas around here I do use the remote start a lot because that's pretty awesome when it's cold out so hopefully it'll kind of get better as we go along and I only have a thousand miles on it too so we shall see and then um, so those are the screens and then on this guy here if you um, this is to change your music so as you click up that'll change your sources and then say if you want to do FM then the left well here we'll put it on the music one so then you can see the left and right will change your presets for each source that you have so that's pretty cool there's your um, Bluetooth phone stuff your voice commands I really use that at all um, over here is your cruise it does have a uh, adaptive cruise control which is super awesome with um, it'll take you down to zero to full stop and then we'll restart um, so that's been pretty cool I've been experimenting with that a little bit and stop and go traffic and it's pretty cool um, and then you can add the lane keep assist if you want that on or off and then this just turns the whole thing on and off um, so yeah, big fan of the adaptive cruise control with low speed follow. There's your wipers there. Um, now this one comes with automatic rain sensing wipers. Um, on the highway, they work really well. And in town, they I have it at the most sensitive and I still feel like there's too much water on the, on the um, windshield. So I wish it was more sensitive, but when I have taken highway trips, it works very well at higher speeds. So, oh well. And then here's your um, headlights. It has automatic headlights. And then, uh, like I said, automatic high beams, which I haven't had too much experience with. So we'll have to see how that goes. And your fog lights on and off there. Um, so this is the um, touch screen here. It's... It looks really good when everything's off because it looks humongous, but you can see it's actually quite a bit smaller. I think this is a seven inch screen as well as the gauge cluster. But I mean, it's a nice screen. It's a matte finish you can see there. So even in full sunlight, there's no, not really much glare. You can still see everything. So um, it gives you two options of skins. So this is the second skin that you can use because I, I just felt like the skin that it comes with from the factory it it's probably a little more usable but it's so ugly it's like very old school looking and so I like 
this skin a lot better with the grass and stuff. And you can change the picture, you can upload pictures. But um, yeah, so this is kind of the audio screen. So really the only thing that, the thing that would make this awesome is if you could have multiple apps on the same screen. So say like, you know, your audio and your map and your phone or something like that. So the way it's set up right now, you can only have kind of one thing at a time. So this is the audio here and you can, you can see you can change your source. Um, and then here's your back button. They're all uh, touch buttons. There's no hard buttons there. Um, you can change their sound. So this has like an upgraded sound system. It has a subwoofer in the back, but uh, it, I mean, it sounds okay, but it's nothing to write home about. I definitely had better sounding cars. This is the map uh, set up there. So this being the touring, it comes with navigation and yeah, so it's a Garmin based system. It looks pretty good, works fine. Um, there's your audio again and uh, phone set up there. Um, this just changes the brightness and I think it'll turn it off. Okay, so there's dim, there it's off altogether. And so there's kind of the home screen and it's um, swipeable. So you could add different odds and ends in there if you wanted to. So there's kind of all your settings. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty responsive screen for sure. I always want a bigger screen, but this one works pretty good. And like I say, it looks, you know, it's the color is good. So can't complain too much. And here's the backup camera. So it's, it's okay quality. It's actually not the best quality, but, um, it does have the, uh, dynamic marker here and you can um, change the view here that's straight down that's kind of a wide angle that's the true view so yeah it works pretty well though and it does have the um, backup sensor so if something's coming into your path it'll okay then below that you have your climate controls. It's a dual zone automatic climate control, so that works fine. Oh yeah, you do have a volume knob, which is very awesome. I honestly don't think I would have bought the car without a volume knob, because it's so handy. Um, but yeah, anyways, climate control works good. I will say the one thing is it's kind of noisy. It seems to be kind of, it runs off the defrost uh, to do the temperature a little bit, so you get that it's fairly a noisy fan. Um, other cars I've had, they blow more from the floor. <clears throat> Not that that was the greatest either. I don't know what the greatest would be, but so it just, it's a little, the fan's a little noisy if it's really working. Um, but yeah, you get this climate and that'll pull up the climate stuff if you need those specifically. And um, you have manual fan buttons there. You can just turn the whole thing off if you want or on um and then your defroster buttons and yeah when you turn the rear defrost on then it turns on the side mirror heaters as well you have three level heated seats so that's nice they are um perforated leather but they're not uh cooled seats unfortunately but so um electronic parking brake very nice and then the combined with the brake hold so uh, when you t hit that, then it will, um, okay, it wants me to buckle my seatbelt. But yeah, so then when you come up to a stoplight and come to a complete stop with your foot on the brake, then it'll basically turn on the parking brake and you can take your foot off the brake. So that's pretty cool. And then you just hit the gas to go again. So I like that a lot. Um, it's a CVT transmission. So, you know. 
Oh well, I, I think for to get the adaptive cruise control with the low speed, you know, the spot follow comes to a complete stop. It's it was a sacrifice to go to automatic, but um, kind of a worthwhile one. So you have your drive, you have drive. Um, sport mode is a little more responsive, and then low uh, just kind of has it in one gear, so you're always revving at about four thousand RPM. So. Um, but the sport you can definitely tell a difference in so that's nice um it's a pretty peppy it's a 1.5 liter turbo engine and the horsepower i forget the number exactly but it's around 180 it's in between the civic with the 1.5 turbo and the civic si so it's kind of right in the middle of those two as far as horsepower and torque so i mean it's not going to blow you away with with this power but it's definitely enough you never feel underpowered in this car so that's kind of nice so, yeah, but you can see it's kind of all soft touch here. Um, you have this little piano black strip that runs across, some more wood grain trim. Um, the uh, glove box is damped. It's pretty good size. And uh, so there's the other door. So as far as storage, um, it's pretty good. You have uh, two, a couple slots for bottles or whatever there little map pocket down there there's your speaker um, and then the middle has a lot of storage so um, you have this nice bin here and then uh, a power outlet there you have two cup holders here that seem pretty roomy um, you have a armrest that slides forward and back and then you pull the little lever and it lifts up and um, and then, so you have the kind of this big bin here, and they give you one shelf, so you can have that forward here, or you can slide it back and have access to the bin there, or you can take it right out if you wanted to. And it's a really big space in there. You could, I mean, you could fit a lot of, probably like two gallons of milk there if you wanted, or a big old briefcase or something, purse. Um, so this shelf you can you could take it right out or you can kind of flip it this way and stick it in if you wanted and then you would have like this big open space although everything would be visible there so but I usually run it like this and that works pretty good and then over on the left side you do have a little slot I put uh, quarters in it and then you have a few other controls here where you can turn off some of the lane keep assist stuff, traction control off, your trunk pop button. <clears throat> and then down on the side here is the uh, gas thing to pop the gas cap and then to pop the uh, hood. So I'll show you the back seat here. Oh, so here's the gas cap. So fortunately Honda went with a capless fuel system now so that's pretty awesome I hope eventually they just drop the whole locking gas cap because I don't feel like that's really needed anymore I haven't I mean all the Fords I've had the last few years didn't lock and I never had a problem but at least they do have a capless system now so this is the back seat also quite roomy um, so I'm about 6'1 and me sitting behind myself, I still have a couple inches there. There's good foot space. Um, so it's definitely a roomy back seat. You can um, recline the seats a little bit. So I have it reclined right now. And then the door looks pretty much the same, although it is hard touch on the top now, but still padded armrest, padded leather here. And, um, you have some bottle holders, you have two vents, you have two um, power outlets here, they're, and they're pretty heavy duty, they're 2.5 amps, so they'll power iPads or whatever. You do have a couple in the front too, I think I forgot to mention that, but, but these are actually the more high powered ones. But for Apple CarPlay, you have to use the ones in the front. Um, you have one map pocket here. You have an armrest with cup holders, nicely padded. Um, so 
so yeah you have a um, lights here you do have a sunroof moonroof set up here with a sliding cover you have four handles which are damped so that's pretty nice um, you have adjustable uh, seat belts in the front up and down and I'll show you the seats here <clears throat> You can see better the door set up there, the storage. So you can either pop the handle here or there's levers in the back, but you can see it's, it uh, folds 60 40 split. And you can see, I hope you can see that, that the, the foot of the, the seat actually lowers and that basically creates a flat load it is a flat load floor so that's pretty pretty awesome so being the touring it does have a foot powered so as long as you have the key fob you can click your foot under there and then it will go ahead and open not the fastest opening in the world but what you're gonna do but it is powered and you can see it's a pretty good very nice space. I'm going to try and see if I can fit my bike in here standing up. Um, but it gives you, you can either have a flat load floor here or you can pull this down and it drops down about three inches. And that's usually how I run it because then you have a little, like a lowered floor and things don't roll around so much. You do have a um, privacy cover there. The only trouble is if you take it off, there's not really a spot to put it under the floor or anything. So I just, I don't have rear passengers, so I just put it on the floor in the back seat. And they do give you a spare tire. So that's pretty cool. And then you have these little spaces on the side here. Here's the levers for the, to drop the seats down. You have some lights there. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So we'll flick. So this is the motion. You just do a quick flick right in the middle, and it'll close out. There's the backup camera right there. You do have dual chrome exhaust on the Touring. I don't remember if they all come with dual exhaust, but um, yeah. Touring also comes with the roof rails, although it doesn't come with the crossbars, so you can see those would go there if you wanted to add them. So I'm not sure how much those cost. So, but yeah, that's a look at the uh, CRV overall. I'm very pleased with it. <clears throat> those, uh, the driving stuff, the adaptive cruise control and whatnot, really makes it makes it a winner in my book. And like I say, it's in good power. A lot of room in the back and um, all-wheel drive so but yeah that's a look if you have any questions drop me a line or whatever and uh, but thanks for watching take care